Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ellie Windham, the founder of Walking Other People's Shoes and the program manager for um for us. It's um based in New York. I'm in Brooklyn, and Walking Other People's Shoes strives to empower women of color voices through providing transformative experiences through storytelling and community. And we're happy that you could join us tonight. Um, and this is a free monthly book club for children, parents, educators, and anyone who wants to have a deeper dive into themed activities and concepts around race, identity, and culture. Uh, additionally, we have themed um, activities and snack ideas. I want to introduce you to our two facilitator facilitators tonight. Um, Ruth is our activities facilitator, and she's not here tonight because she's in class. She's a uh, senior at Lehman College, and she is pursuing a bachelor's in speech pathology and audiology, and she's going to do a master's in speech pathology. And these degrees will help her to continue her work in schools, provide extra support and in, in speech to students with special needs. She's based in the Bronx. And then we have um, Mia Wen Chen, our facilitator to our book club. Uh, she uh, blogs on parenting, children's books, and education at pragmaticmom.com. And she's also the co-creator for the Multicultural Children's Book Day. So we'll start with uh, the introduction of the monthly book. Yay! <laughs> Thank you for coming. Um, so uh, I can't believe it's November already, right? November 2nd, even, not even the 1st. Um, so we're celebrating... Native American Heritage Month. And also, I just wanted to mention that um, Multicultural Children's Book Day, we, we also give away free books. And right now, it's our sign-up period. So if you just go to our website, um, I'll put it in the chat. Um, you, you There's like a sign-up form to be a reviewer. Um, and you can just sign up and get free diverse books in exchange for a review. It, it, you can just post you know, like it has a, a short review. You can just post it to social media or to Amazon or to Goodreads. If you're a teacher, you can just simply show how you use the book in the classroom, just like a photograph. Um, so we're hoping that we'll get a lot of reviewers this year and please help us spread the word. So um, so for this month, I picked um, Just Like Grandma by Kim Rogers and it's illustrated by Julie Flett. Um, and Kim Rogers and I are both in soaring 20s which is a like it's kind of a picture book club um or a picture book group where um basically it's just a, a group that helps promote um picture book authors um and i joined it i joined it more recently i think she's more of a early member and julie flat actually the illustrator uh she created a poster for us a few years ago for um for one of our classroom kits. And I, I asked her too, I was like, Julie, do you want to come join us? But she says she has terrible social anxiety and just, she just doesn't do like, um, like, you know, speaking book events. So, you know, but I, I, I love her illustrations. And so for my giveaway, I, um, I always like to find like Native American um, companies. And so I found this one um, and it is maple syrup that they made themselves and then this is maple butter which is maple syrup uh and butter actually um so looks delicious um and i'll i'll send that out uh with the book winner for today and they gave to me really packaged up with a lot of bubble wrap so hopefully it will be completely intact when it arrives <laughs> at the winter store steps um and so um so so one um like one, I guess, criticism or feedback from like just in general from Native American um, authors is that, you know, a, like a lot of kids in general think that Native Americans are a thing of the past. Like they just think it's, you know, teepees and, you know, like, like no, like, like they don't, they don't exist anymore. Um, and so, so that's why it's so important to have, you know, children's books that show contemporary Native Americans. Um, um, and so, 
and there weren't so many before. So I chose this book because it it is both showing Native American culture and in a you know present modern day, um, very much so actually. So I I, I mean. And it's like, it's the kind of thing where you're like, oh no, kids don't really, but like literally my own children, when they were in elementary school, middle school, they didn't think Native Americans existed. So, I mean, it, it's like, I was just like, it's pretty prevalent, you know? And I had to be like, what? Like, why do you think that? Um, and, and it's just, I think, because they just, you know, didn't get exposure. Like, you know, they didn't see books about that and they didn't know anybody. Um, and then their only real exposure was like to Plymouth Plantation, which would, which um, is a field trip that they take in elementary school. And that really shows, you know, that life during the pilgrims. And so, you know, everyone's in costume. So, you know, I guess that's part of the problem. But so this book is an antidote to that, just like grandma. So I picked a few um, uh, pages to spread and to share. And this is published by Heart Drum. And this is a, um, a publishing imprint that focuses on Native American indigenous stories. Okay, so let, we'll just get started. On the steps of a house at the end of the street, Becca watches grandma bead and bead buckskin moccasins. More than anything, Becca wants to be just like grandma. Let me try, Becca says. Grandma hands her thick thread and a thin needle. Together they bead until the sun dips below the tree line and grandpa calls them in for corn soup. Um, and then she sees her grandmother dancing. Um, and so Becca, she flares out the back door and stands near the garden barefoot too. Let me try, she says. Grandma shows Becca some dance moves in the cool grass. Together they flutter like the most beautiful butterflies grandpa has ever seen until the sun dips below the tree line and he calls them in for fried chicken. Inside grandma's studio, Becca watches grandma paint and paint a colorful sunrise. More than anything, Becca wants to be just like grandma. And so grandma, you know, Anytime Becca wants to try something, Grandma's right there to show her um, and teach her. And then um, the tide turns, or like then we see then we see sort of like a, a very modern, you know, uh, interpretation. Inside a house at the end of the street, Grandma looks out the window and watches Becca all alone with her ball. Grandma sprints outside and stands next to Becca. Let me try, she says. And Becca shows her the place she's been practicing for basketball tryouts. More than anything, Grandma wants to be just like Becca. And then we see Grandma learning how to play basketball. And here Becca is trying out for her basketball team. And she does great, she makes the team. Together they high five until the sun dips behind the gym and grandpa takes them out for pepperoni pizza. They all laugh and eat and celebrate Becca's win. On the steps of the house at the end of the street, Becca knows that she's just like grandma, beating, dancing, painting, winning, playing, eating, celebrating, spending time with her grandpa too, together. And grandma knows that she is just like Becca. So I'll give you a close up of some of the illustrations. Um, sometimes Julie has a more of a collage style. Um, but this seems like it's like, you know, both painterly and collage. But yeah, she she has the most beautiful illustrations. Um so um 
Danielle says that she signed up for Multicultural Children's Book Day as a reviewer. Thank you, Danielle. And that she loves the cover. And that Angeline Booley is an amazing Native American author from Michigan. I think I have heard of her. Um, and she says the book is heartwarming. And I love grandparent, excuse me, and child stories, as I didn't have grandparents. And I, you know, my, um, my daughter, um, my oldest, when she grew up, um, you know, she, like all the grandfathers had passed away like a long time ago. Like my husband's biological father died when he was three and my own father died when I was in college. So she didn't have, she had grandmothers and she had grandmother, like, like, you know, almost like, like adopted grandmothers, but she didn't have any grandfathers. And when she was like two or three years old, she was like really sad about it. She was like, I miss grandpa. And we're like, you never even met grandpa. I mean, like they've been dead for a long time, but she was really sad. She missed grandpa. And I feel like her whole life, she kind of went through and found grandfather figures and had them adopt her. Um, so yeah. Um, I didn't know my grandparents that well. I knew my mother's side were um, living, you know, like an hour away from us, but they didn't speak any English and I didn't speak Japanese. So we would see them, but there was quite a language barrier. And then my father's parents were in China and China was closed at the time. And like, you can even get letters in and out. So I, I totally can relate to, I mean, like it just seems so great to have this like warm grandparent grandchild connection. And I love books about that too. Um, and I think if you have it, then it makes you nostalgic. And if you don't have it, it just, makes you appreciate it and I think there's I think there's lots of people out there who like would willingly be like a stand-in you know <laughs> adopted be the, happy happy to be adopted as your as a as a grand grand uh, parent figure so that is very nice um Ellie also said me too I don't have grandparents um yeah so yeah, I, I love, so I love that this is, has so many layers to the story. Um, it's a grandparent story. Uh, we learn a lot about Native American culture and the author, let's see, we'll learn more about her. She is an enrolled member of the Wichita and affiliated tribes. Um, and Julie Flett is a Swampy Cree and Red River Metis author and artist. So. I know that you're supposed to refer to their tribe instead of like a catch-all, um, but sometimes I just don't remember. And sometimes it's like, it's multiple, like in Julie Flett's case. Um, okay, so I think um, Ellie gave me screen sharing capability and Ruth was kind enough to make us a video. So let me find that. And we'll start. Hi hey everyone, this is Ruth from our Multicultural Children's Book Club. It's a pleasure being here with you all, even though it's virtually. Um, as you guys know, I've been I'm taking my classes, which will, which will be ending in December, and then I can go join you guys in person. Well, yeah. right in person, there's <laughs> right live through you. So as always, I'd like to I'd like to share. Um. How beautiful and amazing the book was. And I know I say that every time, but all of her books, oh, it's sorry. just all so wonderful in their own way, right? I think that this book had beautiful illustration, the beautiful message about role models and the importance that they have and the impact that they can leave in our lives. Go ahead and meditate as we go throughout our activity. So, what I would like for you guys to do before we get started is just take one or two minutes to go ahead and grab some. Sorry, it has some slight lag. Blank white paper, or it can be a notepad or construction paper, or something of the sort. Now we need the writing utensil so that can be a pen. And that can be a pencil and then 
and the dancing hands. Just give it a pop of color. Just give me an idea what we're doing. I'm sure you guys already know. Um, so Ellie's gonna pause me really quickly and then you guys can give her a thumbs up or let her know in the chat when you've got your answer. What Ellie's gonna do or Mia is just please share um the link for our jam board, which we're gonna do again today. It's, I think it's just an amazing way to connect. For some of us who maybe are not so comfortable speaking, you can go. But you can write it out or, you know, we can use technology to converse. I think it's a beautiful way to include everyone. Um, so you guys can go ahead and click on the link. And I'm going to share my screen really quickly just to guide you guys through it. So um, the first part we were going to discuss is who is or was a role model in your life and why, right? So in the case of the story, it was the grandmother and her granddaughter learned so many things from her from like dancing and just being kind overall and giving and sharing. She learned how to feed, she learned artwork, and those are all beautiful things that she can, I'm sure she will carry on for the, for the rest of her life and just beautiful memories she have. But then she would also show, you know, if she has any children or maybe just family members that she would like to show um, from what her grandmother has shown her and just carry on maybe some of those traditions or things she's learned. So for me, an important role model is my grandmother, my abuela Doña. Um, she is an amazing woman. She had she raised five kids, has 12 grandchildren, and six great great grandchildren. And anytime any of us have ever gotten sick, um, she has made she's taken time to go bring us Remedy, soups, foods, and sometimes maybe they may not be the best. They might not taste the best, you know, maybe they smell a little bit, you know, funky because some things that she's put in there, but she did it with such a loving heart and um and with such beautiful intention, right? And I think intention is always one of the most important things. So what Ellie's gonna do is she's gonna go ahead and she's gonna pause me to just give you guys three to four minutes to quickly discuss who is or was a role model in your life and why? And I know maybe they might not encompass or the, you know, grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, maybe it could be an uncle, not, you know, great at, and, you know, and that's fine. You guys can go ahead and share that. Um, that's also important as well. And always remember here, we have a little sticky note. So maybe if you don't feel comfortable sharing, you can go ahead and write who and why on a little sticky note. You can get, and you can save it, just type, you can just type and save. And you can also go ahead and write the name of that person. Maybe for me, like I said, that was my Abuela Doña, and she's on there. Um, Doña is an, a respectful way of saying elderly woman in the Dominican Republic, and Abuela is grandmother. So we, that's what we call her, or Abuela Doña. So you guys can go ahead and take some time to do that. And Ellie will go ahead and unpause me once you guys are done. Um, Ellie, do you have that link? Or we can just use the chat. Wait, I think you're pop, you're um, muted, Ellie. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can use a chat um, since it might be easier. Um, but yeah, I, I guess who is... Well, I can start with who's my role model. Um, my coach... Um, it's uh she helped me to train for this hundred mile race but she trained me for my 100k race as well and i was able to um you know learn a lot from her from um all my training with her uh because you know she 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 founded a all women's group in williamsburg in brooklyn and um, you know, she's an art therapist, so she has like a background in therapy. So her approach is really um a really great way to approach athletes. Um sometimes hard love is what you know coaching has been, but she's more um a different kind of approach on the um you know, coach. So I appreciate her and her um, soft, soft approach on coaching. That's awesome. 
So my mom passed away in 19 and she's kind of my role model, like more and more, you know, because like she literally never said like unkind things about anyone. And like, that was something like, I kind of didn't notice as much growing up, but my mother was Buddhist. So I, I feel like a lot of it is, um, you know, the way she was raised um, as, as being Buddhist. But then like, after she passed, I got a letter from her childhood friend. She grew up in San Francisco's Japantown, be you know, before World War II internment. And anyway, in the letter, her friend said, um, yeah, your mom never said anything bad about anyone ever. And I, I just remember thinking like, wow, that's so hard. You know what I mean? Because, you know, like not to criticize or say anything bad, but like, even like, even for one day, but anyway, that, that's, that's what I try to remember, uh, going forward. Um, Robert Joyce said a former high school teacher and an uncle are role models. And Danielle says, Debbie always focused her complete attention on people and always made me feel seen, loved, and important. Debbie still greets me with joy and positivity. And I think she said, oh, her person is her mom's friend, Debbie. And that's actually like that full attention um, and making people feel loved and seen and important. That That is a special gift too. It is especially like in these times with like social media and like everyone's rushing and, you know, it almost feels like an old school value. Yeah. All right. So, well, I'll hit play now and see. Mm -hmm. um, right now we're going to go ahead on to our next section. And that is, what is something that they taught you to do, right? I'm sure that there's maybe um, something you've learned from them, whether it be cooking, dancing, artwork, sewing, or it could be something else that's not on here. It's not limited to that. Um, it's just to get us thinking, what is it that we learned from our role model? What is something that they taught us or that we saw and we learned, right? For me, it was to cook and make remedies. My abuela doña, she has plants in her house. Garden. She has, it's, a, it's a beautiful garden and she uses them to, um, like I said, when we're sick, she brought me an oregano plant, which is ginormous in my house and I love to put in all of my teas and help me whenever I have maybe a headache or um, a, a pain and it helps so much and it's just a natural way of you know of to help my body and I love that that's something I've learned from her and you know would love to pass on to my children and hopefully they pass on to theirs that's not something that's you know so normal over all of you know America so what we're going to do is as <laughs> we did before at least and I'll go ahead and pause and give you guys just two to three minutes to really quickly tell you um share what is something that your role model taught you to do or what is something you learned from them right and that maybe that can even be like a a character trait in the sense of you know being being kind or being compassionate being loving sharing with others those are also some beautiful things and you guys can go ahead and if you don't want to say it, go ahead and put that post it on there as well Does anyone want to share? Yeah, I can share. Um, well, a part of the ultra running um, in the recovery part is important. And I think she really helps me to remember like one step at a time. Um, it's also part of the training for the races, but also it's important to just you know, focus on whatever step is in front of you instead of like at the end. So it's just built, built up slowly versus like trying to reach to the bottom, I mean, to the finish um, as fast as you can. Anyone else? My, uh, so my mom um, is really creative and she didn't really start painting until well into retirement. But then she started taking classes, watercolor and oil, and she was like so good. I have like paintings all over the house, but it it like her creativity kind of, um, I mean, I did it a little bit like when I was younger, but I also like started painting more and more as I got older. So I'm just going to show you, th this is a watercolor that I'm working on. 
uh, for, of a house. I took a class on how to paint architecture. And so this is a for a just a house portrait. <laughs> Let's see. Let me can you do that? Can you find the um comments? The chat. Oh, here's the chat. Sorry. Oh, hi, Rossica. Rossica's here. Um, oh, here's some beautiful things. Danielle said, Debbie taught me that people are beautiful. All people are precious gifts. That is such, that is so, that's so lovely. That's just such a, especially like in these times where like we seem so at war with each other and divided and literally countries are at war. That's, that's such a beautiful, simple thought that I wish everyone could take that to heart. Rastika said, sorry for joining in late. She just got free and she's going to just listen to us. Welcome. Yay. We're so happy to have you. Um, so well, Rastika, feel free to join in. We're just talking about role models and what they taught us. And that's based on um, this book of a grandmother showing her granddaughter um, how to how to bead, how to paint um, and other things. And then the granddaughter in turn showing her her basketball moves. Um, all right, does anyone else? Or I'll, I'll continue playing. I hope that everyone had the opportunity to share. We're gonna go ahead onto our next slide. Now it's time to draw. Maybe you were wondering what we we're going to use our paper for. I mean, I'm sure you used in drawing, but we are going to draw. So we're going to go, we're going to go ahead and put those two parts together, right? We're going to put up, um together. Who was our role model? Maybe it was mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, and what they show us to do. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw that picture, right? Um, let's say for example, well, in my case, my grandmother she taught me how to make natural lemon piece. I'm going to go ahead and draw a little quick scene of my grandmother showing me how to make some tea with the natural herb she had growing in her house, something like that, or it can be cooking for you or artwork and, and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to give you guys about five minutes, you know, to draw your artwork. Um, and then Ellie will come in and talk to me again. Yeah. Three, one. So I'm just going to show you my drawing. <laughs> I wish I, my mom's art is all over the house. I don't have any in my office. Wait, Ellie, you're muted. I love how I keep forgetting to unmute myself. I said, I made something really simple. It's, I know you can't see it. Maybe, I don't know. Let's see. It's a cactus. Nice. <laughs> Since uh, I was in the desert. There's my cactus, guys. Um, Joshua tree. Yeah, it looks like a Joshua tree. Yeah, so it's it's a cactus. Um, it's somewhere that we both love. We've been to Phoenix multiple times together, and so it's just a nice memory, um, experience. Every time we go out there, we're learning something new. Um, I did a sixty k twice, a hundred k. And then a uh, hundred, like attempted a hundred mile. So that's like four times right there. So we love our cactus experience. Is it elevated? Are you running in an elevation too? So it's like that much harder? Um, it's, it's heat and cold and then elevation. Yes. It's, it's 50% uh drop out because people run too fast at the beginning where it's super super hot um the heat gets to them and then they drop in the lap in the third loop or second or third loop i made it to four fourth loop so four out of five of 100 yeah miles. yeah so i was i was getting closer i got past to most people where they would quit so Wow. So it's not just distance, but you're also battling the elements and it's that much harder because it's elevated. So it's harder to get oxygen in your lungs. Is, is Does anyone else want to share anything? Cross like I might.
but I'm like, I'm inspired by you, Ellie. Like not, I mean, like I wouldn't have tried any of those things, but the fact that you're, you're going to try again, like this experience of 30 hours straight, not just being awake, but literally running has not deterred you. You're not like, oh, that was good enough. I'm done. You're like, yeah. I'm going to come back next year. And yeah. this will be my fifth time. Yeah. That's I mean, pretty amazing. It was around 20 hours when I had to stop running, but I would have had another 10 hours. I mean, six, yeah, 10 hours, almost 10 more hours to finish. Less than 10 hours, actually. It would have been like, yeah, ten. I had a ten hour, less than ten hours to finish my last marathon and a half. You know, so thirty thirty miles. But you know, I think it taught me not to think failure, like looking at success differently. You know, success means not just to finish the race, but success to finish the mileage I covered and then also the training in it because that's like five months of training you know that's lots of time and energy yeah all right so Rasika do you want to share something or I can keep playing like we can have you share like a little bit further as well hi uh, I'm sorry I don't have light at my place so I it's okay it's okay if I just talk about oh yeah sure yeah so I was just hearing you out and I think my aunt would be my inspiration because just like me she's also an illustrator and uh, so she's actually the one who introduced me to this illustration world and I really got into it so we used to draw together over the weekends so whenever I went visited her place we drew together every like all the time and she made sure that uh, I draw at least for half an hour every day and until and unless I do that I don't get a food <laughs> so I think she's still she's still my inspiration like now I teach kids drawing and now I understand that if if they want to learn digital drawing, it's just easy. So it can be learned within a month or two. But having a hand skill is a lifetime skill. So I think I'm very grateful to her. That's amazing. I'm glad she encouraged you and just got you in the habit of making art every day. Because that's that's not easy to, to do, you know, to be in that mindset. Yeah. yeah. Right. And what a beautiful outcome, you know, because of her... Uh, love and just like wanting you to you know like, like treat it like a profession or just like to to really yeah um, embrace it like she kind of taught you how to be successful at it by just and like it's kind of way it, it's like I do it every day so whenever I have a little time at school uh when my kids they see I, I teach at a preschool so when they see me drawing they come the, so the interested ones they come and sit next to me and they draw too so I think I'm just in my little way passing my aunt's thing to my to the kids it feels good it really feels good that's wonderful okay let's wrap up because I hope I... you guys have the opportunity to finish your drawing um I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna share mine Ooh, I'm gonna go ahead and fix my camera so y'all can see my drawing Here we go. So I drew myself over here. I am taller than my grandma. By the time I was eight, I was taller than her. She's a tiny old lady, but trust and believe she's gonna let anyone bully her or tear her down because of her height. She loves to wear her heels. Um, and she's always dressed up. She has little cute red glasses. And this is me with my curly hair. And this is us. This is in her house. She has a big plant and here we are making some tea on the stove or I'm just thinking here I was usually when I have a headache she's like oh we're going to the kitchen we're making tea so that's my drawing my picture so um I'll go ahead and pause me once again and give you guys two to three minutes to go ahead and share I think we shared already um I'm sure that you've had beautiful drawings um because 
every time we've had a book club, you guys, you guys are artists, you know, I have my stick figures, but you guys blow me away every time. So I go, I hope that you guys had a wonderful time that you really enjoyed. Um, this maybe, you know, you can, if your role model lives near or close to you, maybe you can give them this drawing, you know, maybe you're like, oh, this is not the best thing ever, but trust me that any little drawing, it, it means the world. Sometimes some of my students do give me drawings and I might not understand what it is, but it means the world to me because I know that they had me in mind. So I hope that you guys have enjoy the rest of the night and we see you again for our next book club. Um, next book club, I'll be there virtually, but the one after that, I should be there in person. So I hope to see you there. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Ruth. I mean, like, she's a full-time student, so we really appreciate her um, making these videos. So I know um, the author, Kim Rogers, here she is connecting right now as we speak. Yay. Let's see. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. She's still trying to get on. Here she is. Hi, Kim. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you hear me? Yes. I can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear us? No, I can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah, I'm having trouble hearing any of you. I don't know what I should do here. Um, we're not on mute. Do you want to go back out and come back in? Oh, we have to type it to her, I think. Do you want to come? Oh, you got that. Maybe I should log back in. Me log back in. I'll cut. Okay, I'll do that. Sometimes the tech is not very cooperative. Mm. Oh, here she is. If not, we can just we can just say it and type it. Hi, okay. can you hear us now? now? Yay! Hi. Welcome, Kim. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. So I was just telling people earlier that we're both in Soaring 20s together, and that's how we met. Yes. And then also that, like, one message I heard just as a children's book blogger many years ago, but it always resonated, uh, especially because it was true of my children, was that most children think that Native Americans are a thing of the past. My own children thought they were just in history books, not even history books that, that they read. I mean, you know what I mean? Like they're not even that well covered. And that, so there was a real need for um, all kinds of stories that showed contemporary life. And so I was just wondering um, the story behind the story, was that something that you had in mind when you decided to write the story or what was the inspiration for you? when you sat down to create well, this beautiful book? First off, as a child, I never saw myself in a book. And that was always really hard growing up. And then as an author, I didn't even think I could write these stories that people would want to even read them. And so when Heart Jump came along, that's such a wonderful opportunity for Native authors. And then as far as this book goes, I was thinking about my grandmothers, especially. I had these really great relationships with all of my grandmothers. My grandma, my granny, and my great-grandmother. I actually got to know my great-grandmother. She passed away when I was in middle school. And so that was just a really rare thing. And so because of these special relationships, I wanted to write a book that shows the bond between a granddaughter and her grandmother. I hadn't seen many of those books and I really wanted to show that relationship off and 
Also in my Wichita culture, intergenerational relationships are so, so important to us. We hold our elders in high esteem. They are the wisdom keepers. They are the ones that pass down stories, cultural knowledge and ensure kinship ties. And so I wanted to honor all of them. Yeah, that was beautiful. We we talked in our own discussion about um, in our art project about role models and grandparent like inter like multi generational relationships and you know a lot of us didn't have the benefit of you know like relationships with our grandparents and but but you know like picture books they can bridge that gap you know what I mean so if you didn't have that you can still see that and feel that warmth and I definitely felt that warmth in yours, you know, um, it was such a loving relationship, but I really liked how you, then you turned it like head to toe and all of a sudden the grandmother was willing to be the person learning and the granddaughter had something to show and teach. And how, like, how are you a basketball player? Or how did that piece? Cause that, that, like, that's a really, usually you, you see these intergenerational stories and it it's like that first half and it just goes on and on and on and then it sort of ends but yours had this really interesting flip um and i i loved how it it's like every like all generations can teach each other if they're willing to learn and so i just wondered like how did you get that genius idea well when i was younger i didn't play basketball on a team but i we did have a basketball goal and we always played outside and so that was a lot of fun and as far as thinking about elders and role models i was thinking about how kids can also be role models as well to adults we can learn so many things from them especially like if you think about electronics my kids know more about you know ipads and laptops and all of those things and so they've taught me a lot about that even doing presentations and all that things i didn't know so we are always learning things from our children they learn from our elders but we learn from them them as well. And I wanted to show how important they are too to elders. So that's why. Yeah. So for me, like I love learning about new cultures through food. And you did a really lovely job of sort of lacing in corn soup and um, fried chicken, um, pancakes, um, beans and fry bread. So like not everything was like, oh, you know, like, oh, I didn't know they ate, you know, corn soup or, um, or, corn, oh, or like, or, or, or even like um, fried chicken, like that, that, that's so universal. Like, wh wh what were you, um, is that something that you shared with your grandparents, those type of meals, or what were you trying to convey like, Most definitely. I'm trying, I was trying to convey that we are contemporary Native people. We, you know, straddle one side, which is our native heritage, and then the American heritage. And so we are doing all the things that are contemporary. We are celebrating our traditions as well as celebrating American traditions as well. And my dad was the best fried chicken maker. He made fry bread and beans. That was a huge thing that he made. But fried chicken was a big meal that we had in my family. And so I wanted to highlight those things. And also the pancakes. We had pancakes for dinner with my family. We also had breakfast for dinner, you know, biscuits and gravy and eggs. This is basically the South where we live. And so we had all of those things. And then it's funny when I read the book out loud, I can't help my mouth waters every time I say fried chicken. There's just those two words just are, I love those words because they elicit such an emotional response because a lot of us grew up eating those foods. And I think that the this story, even though it's a native story, it's a universal story. It's a celebration of our grandparents. It's a celebration of food. It's a celebration of native culture. And what I'm saying to you as a reader, you're, if you're not native, I'm saying pull up a chair, you know, come sit with us, come read with us, come eat with us. And you're also saying like, look, we're, we're, we're very similar. Like, you know, you guys play basketball or you love to watch basketball? Like, look, we play basketball. Like, that's they, right. You guys like fried chicken? We love fried chicken. Like, oh, you haven't had fry bread? Hey, um, you should try it. That's like delicious. Yeah, come to my house. Like, I'll come make some for you. Food. You'll love it. If you, you know, and I, I love how it's this open door because, you know, for those of us who don't have access to people um, that celebrate that, cult, you know, from that 
you know, from Native American tribes or celebrate that. It it sometimes it just feels like, you know, it's it's not for us or you know, we don't have access to it. But um I love that. I um I was also talking about Julie Flett. I had invited her to come as well. And she just said, Oh, I have social anxiety and like that's like yeah. being in front, yeah. you know, just like yes. speaking is not my thing. But she she was kind enough to illustrate one of our posters years back and we just like we she I mean she's an incredible illustrator and I just wondered like what was the were you like some like I know in my own uh, experience sometimes I have a little bit of ability to give feedback to the illustrator and sometimes it's strictly through the editor what what was your experience with the uh, illustrations and like your feedback loop well my editor is always the person who sends me everything that the illustrator does so she sent me Julie's initial sketches and I looked at those and then gave some feedback and then she sent me the final well it was almost final you know the the first pass I guess as you call it and there was a snowstorm that was about to hit Oklahoma and so I was going to the grocery store trying to get all the necessities that I needed for the snowstorm and I looked on my phone in the car and I saw that my editor had emailed me and she said Kim you need to sit down before you look at this and I thought, oh, no, I want to look at it so bad in my car. This is driving me crazy. You know, you know, I want to look at it so badly. But I made myself wait. I went and got all my groceries and I sped home and I opened it up and I cried because it was just so beautiful. It was it's just this magical thing when you have a author, author's words that join with an illustrator's illustration and it fits so perfectly well. I mean, it just was serendipity. And so I was just so thrilled and happy to see all those pictures. And my agent called me and we were both, you know, basically in tears because it was just so beautiful. Julie's work is incredible. Had you seen a lot of her books prior to her? Yes, book? I had. Um, even before I started writing children's books, I was reading her work. And then when they said Julie Flett, you know, she would love to illustrate your book. I was like, oh, my gosh, what an honor that is. I was thrilled. Yeah, it. I mean, it's it's beautiful. Gorgeous. So she gorgeous. is. Her work is stunning. So I love that page right there. You know, it, it's like it's almost reminiscent of the beating, right? It is definitely. And then the dancing all coming together. It's just so gorgeous. Yeah, the dancing scenes and almost sound like reminds me of her bird song. Her own book. Yeah, and it does because you can tell that that's a Julie Flett book. And then look at the joy of the family dancing in the house. I love how that is Native American joy. A lot of times um, people think of Native people with trauma. We are joyful people too. And so that's just a celebration of our culture. That's a joyful book with joyful illustrations and a joyful relationship between a grandmother and her granddaughter. And that's like a perfect segue into like, could we get advice? Like, you know, a lot of us here, you know, we're allies and we want to be respectful and, you know, celebrate Native American Heritage Month. But a lot of times we're like, OK, uh, we don't want to mess up. Like we know we're not supposed to, you know, say this word or that word or just refer to the tribe or you know what I mean? But, but I love how yours is a sort of an open invitation and has so many layers for us to connect you, but what kind of advice would you give us just as just humans, allies of like, what can we do to celebrate or to spread the message? Like what messages do you want us to spread? How do you want us to spread it? Besides, of course, you know, buy her book, you know, uh, check it out at the library, <laughs> yes. reserve it. Uh, give reviews, uh, Goodreads, Amazon, tell everyone, you know, because I think, you know, supporting all Native American authors is definitely an easy way that we can all relate to. But besides yes. that, what else can we do? We have Those are all such great things, Mia, wonderful things. Um, first off is learn the history of this nation. Learn who was here first. Learn whose land you are on, what tribal nations land you are on. Um, celebrate us by buying our books, just like you said, um, buying Native art also. Go to museums and see the artwork that Native creatives have created. Um, there's a museum up in Tulsa that my husband and I went to for the first time a couple months ago. It's called the Philbrook Museum in Tulsa. 
And there's beautiful Native American artwork scattered throughout that museum. You can find it in all kinds of places. Just look online in your town and see where you can go and, and celebrate that. Also buy um, Native American music. There's a lot of Native artists that you can look up online and celebrate that way as well. And celebrate us all year long, not just for Native American Heritage Month. We are Native 365 days of the year. And so I think, you know, as writers, as authors, as readers, we all need to celebrate one another. I want to learn about other cultures too, not just my own, but I think it makes a better, more empathetic world if we all learn about one another. If you have any links to share, like for Native American artists or uh, that, I, I would love to, because honestly, like I went online, like, like like when I do the giveaways, I always try to honor and find Native uh, small businesses. And it's like, it's hard. To, I mean, like I can always find a website that has a bunch, but it's like, what can I get that's like, I can mail that I don't have to buy like a thousand dollars worth. Um, there is a really great native owned store called eighth generation, like the number eight spelled out eight yeah. generation. I buy a lot of gifts from them and send those to people like blankets and mugs and different things like that. That's a really great place. It's spelled out eight, like E I G H. How do you spell it? E I G H. How do you spell eight? Eighth generation.com. Oh, eight, eight. Yeah, that's it. Yes. Or eight or eighth. I think it's eight. Okay, well, maybe uh, we eight. can find the link afterwards. And yeah, we can I'm so it. sorry. I don't. No, yeah. no, 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 no worries. Okay, but um, but I, but I, I think, but I think that's a good example, though, in terms of accessibility. Yeah. That sometimes we have the best intentions, but it's hard to find. So one way to elevate it is to find the places and to tell people and give the links because I think yeah, a lot of somebody just like I mean, like, yeah. like you know, like who doesn't love maple syrup that's actually you know like truly from the tree you know what I mean that's delicious on pancakes you know like, and I didn't even know that Native Americans have a business where because that's very New England so like you know we find it here in, in Massachusetts and in in New Hampshire like it's you know it's it's like a New England thing but I, it it was new to me but I I'd be happy to buy more you know, because I, I want to support, you know, Native American small businesses. And I didn't even know there was maple butter. Like where, where we live, I can find like maple candy, maple syrup, but I've never, I've, I've never, I didn't even know we had, I, we have apple butter, but I didn't know we had maple butter, but it looks delicious. And it would be, I think, so great on like toast or pancakes. So that's, that is my giveaway. And last year I found a water bottle that had Native American art it was a swell bottle and it was a special collaboration. So I was like kind of psyched because the um the book giveaway was water protectors. So it was like, I was like, oh my God, it's so perfect. But um, yeah, I mean, but I know like I was reading also like about corn soup, like in other books where the corn sometimes is a special corn that it's dried and then reconstituted. So I don't know if you have recipes on your website or your publisher's website or sources of, you know, to how to make the recipes and how to buy the products authentically from, you know, native um, producers. Cause that would be, that'd be awesome. And also just like for us, we're like, we're about a book club. So, you know, I, I'm hoping that like we're giving ideas and then maybe in the classroom in libraries or at home with kid book clubs, people will be like, Oh, I, I'll read this book. We'll do a book club. And then, you know, we can do this as a snack idea. So not to put you on the spot, but if you have oh, that no. already on your website, we'll, we'd I love to. I don't have that on my website. As far as corn soup goes, that is not really one of my tribal recipes. It When you go to a powwow, you'll find all kinds of foods from different tribes. And so I don't have a recipe for, for corn soup. My dad has made it before and I cook a lot as well, but I've never actually made corn soup. I go and have it at powwows. Sounds and delicious. so, and then if you think about fry bread, there's so many different ways to make it. And it's so funny because in my own tribe, we all make it different ways. And we're like, mine's the best. No, mine's the best, you know? So it's one of those things where, yeah, it depends on who's making it. It's like dumplings. Like it, we all yeah. Like. Oh, like dumpling. Yeah. So, um, well, 
what's next for you? What else are you working on or what other books? Uh, like, tell us how else we can support you and um, what else we have to look forward to from your work. Yes, you can go to my website. It's kimrogerswriter.com. And I have a second book that just came out in September, and it's called A Letter for Bob. It was illustrated by Jonathan Nelson, and it came out with Heart Drum Harper Collins. And it's the story about a young Wichita girl and her family who say goodbye to their beloved car, Bob. And the little girl, Katie, she's Wichita, and she basically writes a letter to Bob, thanking him for all their good adventures they've had together. And so that came out. And then I have a third book that's coming out in February 2024. And it's called I Am Osage, How Clarence Tinker Became the First Native American Major General. And again, that's a picture book biography. It comes out with Heart Drum Harper Collins. It's illustrated by Bobby Von Martin. It's his first book that he's illustrated. He's Choctaw. And this is a book that I'm really excited about. I come from a military family. Six of my family members have worked or been stationed at Tinker Air Force Base in Midwest City. I was doing research one day at the Oklahoma Historical Society in Oklahoma City, and I stumbled upon General Tinker's bio. And I found out that he was Osage and that Tinker Air Force Base in Midwest City, a huge Air Force Base, was named in his honor. I did not know this information. I asked my husband, who was stationed at Tinker, and he still works there. He's retired now, but he's a contract worker. And he had never heard of General Tinker. And then friends and other people had asked ne had never heard of General Tinker. So I wanted to write this story to highlight him as being an unsung Native American military hero. So I'm very excited about that book. I can't wait for everybody to read it. I love finding these hidden heroes of history. So I'm super excited about, I, I did see the letter from Bob on social media. Um, so I'm excited to uh, get my hands on that as well. But um, thank you so much for joining us. I know we're just a little bit past, sorry, um, 802. I um, Quickly, uh, Ellie's going to pick the winner. So they'll get the maple syrup, the maple butter and the book. And next month, we're going to be celebrating Hanukkah with the Ninth Night of Hanukkah by Erica S. Pearl. She used to live um, in Cambridge, so like um, near me, but and she literally was neighbors to a very dear friend of mine. They were like next door neighbors and they were friends. And so I met her at a at chicken butt, her chicken butt <laughs> a book event. So I'm excited to have um, Hanukkah for next month. So I hope you guys will all join us. And Ellie is going to... Do, 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 do the honors of picking a winner. So we have our regulars tonight. So <laughs> the regulars continue to win. Um, so I think if we're on rotation of who wins, I'm trying to remember who was last person. I think it was uh, Robert. So I think this time would be a different turn. So I think it's either. I think it's Rossica. I, oh, I got a book in September. September. I got it. So, so that means that it's Danielle. Danielle's turn. <laughs> or who? Yeah, I think it's Danielle's turn. We're trying to be fair. So oh, yeah, great. I think I have everyone to get their turn wow. in our book club. It so. was it was Danielle. so fun actually. When I it's been a year I joined this book club, and so even last year I got a book in September. This year I got a book in September, and September happens to me birthday month. So I'm so happy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a good month for you. Okay. Well, I'm going to send an email with Danielle and congratulations. Thank you for coming. Thank <laughs> you, everyone. Excited. Thank you so much to our special guest, Kim. And um, yes, a great message. Let's celebrate Native Americans year round. Love it. Great. Thank you so much for having me. This has been great. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. And we're going to, it's recorded and we will eventually get these all on YouTube. Ellie and I are going to try to do, we have like 14 <laughs> to do. <I> <laughs> it takes so long to upload. Bye. Bye.